Hello students, welcome to our afternoon read aloud. We've been learning about the US flag, right? And we read two information books about it, nonfiction full of facts. Today we're going to enjoy a fun story, a story that is a little bit true and maybe a bit not true. It's called A Flag for Our Country by Eve Spencer. And on the cover, I can see a flag and I see a woman and I see a man and they're dressed in old fashioned clothes. And I will tell you already that this story takes place around the time of the American Revolution. We're gonna be learning more about that. But basically I explained to you yesterday that after settlers came to Jamestown, more and more settlers came. Settlements grew and grew until we had the colony of Virginia. It was one of the biggest colonies. But the colonists who were ruled over by the King of England started to feel that the King was treating them unfairly. So they declared their independence and they had to fight for it. They had to fight not just with their words as we learned from Martin Luther King, but they had to fight with weapons to get their independence. So. This is a story about a flag for our new country, the country of the United States of America. A flag for our country. Oh, there I see a woman sitting and sewing. I see a needle and thread by the window and here's the town or city where she lives. It was a warm spring day. Betsy Ross was sewing by the open window in her shop. The day seemed quiet, but this was not really a quiet time, for the year was 1776, and America was at war. America was fighting to be free from England. Oh, someone's talking to her. Let's see. Betsy believed in the war, even though it had hurt her deeply. Six months before, her husband, John Ross, had been killed in the war. How she missed him. Betsy and John had made so many plans. They had even opened their own small shop in Philadelphia for making clothes. Betsy's father wanted her to close the shop after John was killed, but Betsy said no. She did not want to give up the shop. She would run it alone. Oh, looks like she has a visitor. There is a story about what happened to Betsy on that spring day in 1776. Early that afternoon, the door of Betsy Ross's shop opened. She looked up from her sewing, amazed to see General George Washington in her shop. Behind him were Robert Morris and her uncle, George Ross. General George Washington was the leader of the American army. He was a great hero, but most people were a little afraid of him. He was also super tall. He was way over six feet tall. Betsy Ross greeted the three men with a curtsy. You see her kind of like spreading her skirt a little and then like bowing down a little. That's like a curtsy. She was thrilled that General Washington was in her shop, but why had he come? Then the general spoke. He said that he and the men had come to ask her a favor. They wanted her to make a flag. Ooh, look at all those different flags. George Washington told Betsy Ross that this would be different from any other flag. This would be the first flag of the new nation, the United States of America. There had been other American flags before, but now things were different. America was no longer a part of England, and General Washington wanted a flag that showed America to be free. Ooh. Betsy Ross listened to George Washington. She had no idea how to make a flag, but she wanted to help win the war, and she wanted to say yes to General Washington. I can try, she told the general. I think this stands for the revolutionary soldiers. Betsy Ross led the men to the room in back of the shop. All eyes were on General Washington as he unfolded a drawing of the new flag. The flag had 13 red and white stripes, 
In the corner of the flag were 13 stars. The stars were in no real order. Each of the stars had six points. Betsy looked at the drawing. The 13 stars and 13 stripes stood for the 13 American colonies. It would be a good flag, she thought, but it could use a little work. Now, someone else might have been afraid to say anything to General Washington, but not Betsy Ross. She suggested that the stars would look better in a circle. And another thing about the stars, she said, a star with five points would look better than a star with six points. General Washington thought so too, but wouldn't a five-pointed star be harder to make, he asked. Nothing easier, Betsy said. She folded a sheet of paper a few times. Then she took just one snip with her scissors and unfolded the paper. Betsy had done an amazing thing. She had cut a perfect five-pointed star. A smile spread across General Washington's face. Then and there, he sat down at the desk and redrew the flag. Now the stars were in a circle. Each star had five points. This was the flag Betsy would make. Betsy worked hard for a week. She borrowed an old flag to see how it was made. Then she bought some thread and bunting. Bunting is a cloth used for making flags. First, Betsy cut out the 13 five-pointed stars with one snip each. Then, with small straight stitches, she sewed the stars onto a piece of blue bunting. It was not easy. Betsy sewed and re-sewed the stars until they were perfect. The stripes were not as hard to make, but she had to sew them many times to make sure they would stay together. Oh, she's working hard by candlelight, right? At last, Betsy Ross was pleased with her flag. She hoped that the general would be pleased too. And he was. In fact, he liked it so much, he wanted her to make more flags. This was good news. Now she would have work for a long time. Remember, she was struggling to keep her shop open by herself, right? And now she has work to do, making flags. Long after the war had ended, Betsy Ross often told the story of the first flag to her children and grandchildren, and for many years, Betsy's family were the only people who knew the story. Then in 1870, Betsy's grandson, William Canby, made a speech about it. He thought what his grandmother had done was important. Many people believed the story about the first flag, but other people weren't so sure. The story was almost 100 years old when William made his speech, and in telling the story, William could only say what he remembered hearing. William tried to show that the story was true. He looked for proof, but he could not find any. There was only the family story. Oh, look, it's like he's up in the attic of his house looking for maybe some papers that will prove the story is really true. We may never know whether or not Betsy Ross made our first flag. History keeps some secrets forever. But we do know Betsy Ross loved her country, and we know our flag still flies over a free nation. And that's about Flag Day that's in June. So again, we don't know whether this story is true or not. In fact, I think most historians, people who study history, think it's a made-up story, but it's a wonderful story. One of my favorite pages in this book is here because it makes a connection to all the other flags that the colonists had at the time, and the point that George Washington was making was that they were in a tough war, and they felt like they needed one flag for everybody to stand behind, to stand for our country, and that's how they came up with this idea of the 13 stars in a circle and the 13 stripes. So I hope you enjoyed our afternoon read aloud. Don't forget to keep washing your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, do some reading, do some writing, help your family around the house, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.